Hey guys, Moran Pobert here and this video is all about interviewing financial institutions. Should you do it? How much should you do it? What should you tell them? Etc. Etc. What my thoughts are on just financial institutions in general. Let's get to it. So hey, welcome back to another video. My name is Moran Pobert. I've been involved in buying businesses full time for the last three years or so. I had many, many businesses over the last 10 years. And this channel is all about me sharing my uh, sharing and documenting my journey in this space, sharing with you some of my mistakes, mistakes, some of my lessons. I think this is the best way to go. I think it's much better buying existing businesses than starting one. Your chances of failing is much higher when you try to start from scratch. And also if you have existing business, even if it's profitable and successful, your best way of growing is by buying another business in that sector. There's only so much you can do internally by, I guess, doing more sales and marketing. If you're watching the, the, the channel, you know that in order to get to this, I guess, point where you're even talking to financial institutions, you need to put yourself out there, talk to business owners, get in financial, start your negotiations with them. You need to know how to look at financials. You need to either know yourself or have someone in your team who know how to look at numbers and how to understand the sector you're in so you'll know what offers to make. So that's just like as a fundamentals to get into even this space of what we're going to talk about right now. So now I want to expand on what my thoughts are about interviewing financial institutions and just in general your team and, and dream team and, and all that. So to begin with, I don't like the fact that people feel successful because they have a dream team because they have partners or uh, I guess if they have they just got a chairman or a CFO and then they think they progressed and they're successful now that means shit guys if you have a dream team that means shit if you have accountants and lawyers who are willing to work for you on success fees that means shit too and also if you interviewed financial institutions and they're potentially they told you on the phone or in in their meeting with you that they will finance your deal at x amount of re, of interest or that they'll loan you up to x amount of millions of dollars that means nothing until you close the deal all those fundamentals behind you means nothing and in my opinion the order that you're doing things is many times wrong if you're watching this channel i want you to think about results just think about it. Let's say you have a chairman, you have a partner, you have a CFO, you have accountants, lawyers, you have industry experts, you have hundreds of financial institutions behind you that you know. Tell me, did that grow your bank account? Are you more wealthy from doing that? Do you, is your net worth bigger now? No, guys, that means shit. And that's why it's so frustrating for me to see people who, who think that reading more or even achieving those menial results means that they're now successful it means nothing if you're coming into the space of buying businesses the only way to measure your results are if you are doing deals and ideally taking money out of those deals i think that even if you're buying businesses uh, like distressed businesses and you're not taking enough money to live from are you successful now i'm not sure i mean you're not even able to finance yourself your day-to-day -day living unless you're taking enough money out of those deals and that's why i see people who are trying to buy distressed businesses and i mean yeah it's cool to say hey i've done a few deals but are you taking money out of those deals what what are you able to to do or how are you able to now change your life after those actions another thing i'm frust really frustrated and again we'll, we'll get to the financial institutions very very soon but it's it's all related so for example i see people who who think they got accountants on success fees the problem is guys getting accountants on success fees they will do the due diligence on deals for you after you sign the loi on success or deferred basis but they'll never do the initial analysis for you before you send an offer and, and and you need to understand that's probably almost as important as doing the due diligence after you already agreed on a price because yes i can send thousands of offers today on, on buying businesses just throwing whatever random uh, multiples uh, or whatever price on those businesses but after i sign the loi that's where the real due diligence starts and if you don't have a legit cfo or someone before that to look at the numbers and understand the sector it means nothing that you have accountants on success fees because all you're going to do is get yourself deferred fees for future deals and you'll get to a point where you can't even handle that on future deals like let's say you you have a deal right now 
you've done the LOI, you bring your accountants to do the due diligence for you and you're not closing the deal because your initial due diligence before you even made an offer was wrong, you're still going to have those fees and you need to bring them to the next deal. Now, if you miss two, three deals like that, your next deals probably won't be even able to, uh, I guess, afford those back fees. I hope, you, I hope that makes sense. So it's, it's really, really important that you have the right systems and CFO and accountants before you even sign the LOI and bring your accountants on success fees. People think that if they bring accountants on success fees that they'll work for you 24 seven to help you close the deal. No, guys, that the, the only time that accountants will work for you on a deferred basis is after you're done, you've done your initial work, you've done your initial analysis. They'll only work for you on deferred or success fees after you have an LOI. And when you're at that stage, you want to make sure that your offer makes sense. And it's not just a random offer that you send based on, on nothing, on no experience or idea. And you just sent an offer for five times EBITDA because you thought that that's the number you need to pay for. And I saw people doing that. They make an offer for five times EBITDA. Uh, they're not even having any seller financing as part of the deal. And they just think that they'll finance it somehow because they've done few interviews in the past with financial institutions who promised them something. No one's give a shit about uh, initial conversations they had with you and no financial institutions will give you money because they told you that they have a, a limit for $10 million. The, the, the amount that they told you initially doesn't mean shit. It's all about the deal that you're bringing them and it's all on a deal by deal basis. So yeah, with financial institutions, yes, I do agree. You need to build relationships with as many financial institutions, uh, debt or equity partners, if it's individuals or institutions or whatever. I do agree that you need to build relationships with them. And the more relationships you have with those type of potential financial partners, the better. I agree with that 100%. Now, my problem when everyone out there trying to interview financial institutions and all that, they think even if they have a business plan or not. Obviously, you don't need a business plan if you're just doing the first call and building rapport with financial institutions. No one gives a shit about your business plan before you have a deal. And my problem with interviewing financial institutions is that many times people do that before they have an idea even of, on a deal. Um, the problem with that is that, and I'm giving you a live example of people who are messaging me. They're basically, they started talking to financial institutions six months ago and it's literally been six months and they don't even have a deal. Do you think that the financial institutions or any financial partner or a private investor or whatever, do you think he gives a shit or even remember you if you talk to him six months ago and you still don't have a deal? No one gives a shit and I don't care what they promised you six months ago. Many times you're going to talk to different uh, representers in those institutions after six months. All they care about is the deal that you have. If you don't have the right deal, no one will finance you anything. And I don't care how nice are you or what first impression you have or how you position yourself or how many suits you wear or whatever. No one gives a shit about that, guys. Financial institutions and financial partners care about the deal. If the deal makes no sense, they won't lend you any money. And if you try to raise money in the past, you know that it's not easy. It's not easy to get money from people or institutions. No one will give you money for free just because you have a nice suit. No one gives a shit about that, guys. When you're going to present yourself in front of uh, financial institutions, uh, you need to have a good deal. And uh, even more than that, you need to have an agreed deal. So until you have a signed LOI, no financial institution will talk to you. They don't give a shit. I mean, yes, you can get proposals and expressions of interest and all that. May maybe if you, if you sell yourself right to those institutions, many people will talk to me they can't even get to that stage. They don't even able to pass the, guy, the gatekeepers because they don't know how to talk to those financial institutions and how to position yourself in a way where they'll take you seriously. And, and what I'm trying to say is financial institutions will only talk to you and give a shit about you when you have a signed LOI. That's where they really, yes, that's where they'll do the job and will do whatever it takes to close the deal with you. Um, so, so what I'm trying to say here is that if you talk to them six months ago, no one gives a shit about the fact that um, six months ago, if you don't have a deal, they don't give a shit about you. And there's, they're more, more likely, the most likely even forgot who the fuck are you after six months. And, and don't get me wrong. Yes, obviously asking the right questions, position yourself right, first impression, having certainty behind your words, excitement, having the attitude that no matter what, you will get their money back and, and you'll basically cover the loan no matter what. That's a given, guys. That, that's like a, a, a ground, a, fun, a basic fundamental to even start a conversation. 
I mean, if you're in the business space and you don't have certainty behind your words or you don't at least position yourself somehow as an, as an, as an expert in the field or someone who will, no matter what, will bring their loan back, you have no chance in this game, guys. So those are the fundamentals. But after that, remember, you need a deal, you need an LOI, you need to know how to negotiate those deals and get to an LOI that makes sense. So you won't bring accountants and lawyers after you have an LOI or on deal that you can't even finance. You see what I mean? So all those fundamentals, having a dream team, having partners, having financial institutions, having accountants and lawyers, it's super important, but it means shit, guys. It means nothing. And most financial institutions won't even take you seriously when you just tell them about who are you and what do you have? You need to bring the deal. When you have a deal, that's where you need, I guess, the introduction to those financial institutions as fast as possible. So to summarize what I said, and just to give you the biggest insight is, don't waste too much time on finding financial institutions or interviewing financial institutions or accountants or lawyers or, or even a dream team. Even dream team members, guys, um, unless they really know you personally or have a reason to continue to talk to you, they don't give a shit if you promise them 5% in a future company unless you can show a deal and you're actually doing the work and constantly building yourself deal flow. No one gives a shit about it. And I think that talking to financial institutions too early or even accountants and lawyers, uh, it's just a time that you wasted a lot of time, a time that you can put into finding motivated sellers. Because guys, when you have a good deal, people will treat you differently and will take you much more seriously. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you want, uh, I guess you don't want to waste time or more financial institutions and, and finding accountants and lawyers and dream team, me and my team um, are willing to give few people here and there the opportunity to have us as your dream team and as your in day to day involved, we're going to be involved day to day as your partners and help you close deals uh, as 50 50 partners. If that's something that you want to learn about. And obviously we already have all the doors open with financial institutions. We have all the accountants, the lawyers, everything you need in order to close deals. We want to do more deals and you'll have the opportunity to learn the process A to Z from a team who combined me and my partners did more than 300 deals. So if you want to learn more about that, see the description below on how to get in touch with me and schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me. I do only two or three calls like this a week. The other time I'm just too much involved in looking into businesses. Um, so yeah, if you want to check that, see below and join either way, join our free business buying mastermind on Facebook and also fill your details below, see the survey below and give me um, just information on what you want me to continue to talk about, what videos you want me to do. Um, it's in the uh, description below and I'll create personalized video for you based on your questions and details. That's it guys. I hope you enjoy. It's very, I guess a bit intense video today, but it's just really, really frustrating me to see people. And again, I've been in the castle and all that. I had people with me who for more than one year didn't, I'm not even talking about didn't build dream team and finding accountants and lawyers, but they didn't even, even start to look at a deal and yes having fundamentals is good but unless you're looking at deals it means shit and you're not going to get results and if you're not into results i mean why are you even spending your time into this so yeah that's it for today i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you soon